Grade 6 math number 3.2, compare and order fractions and decimals. To compare fractions to decimals, we may need to convert them to see the difference. When we compare fractions that have the same denominator, we just compare their numerators. That's easy. This is a piece of cake. 3, 7, and 5. The denominators are the same, so we can see 3 is the littlest, 5 is the middle one, and 7 is the biggest. It's when the denominators are different, we need to change them to equivalent fractions or reduce them to lowest terms to see a difference. These aren't reduced. If they were, we would see that they were still the same fractions and that this was the smallest, this was the middle one, and that was the biggest. See? Might have to reduce them. To put them in order from least to greatest, we can see right away that the 5 has the biggest whole number, so we know this is going to be the last one. It's going to be the greatest. It's these two that we have to worry about, right? So, we find their list of multiples for each one, and we find a common multiple to make the denominators the same. They can meet at 24's house. What does 3 need to become 24? It needs to be multiplied by 8. 2 gets jealous, it gets multiplied by 8 and becomes a 16. What does 8 need to become a 24? It needs to be multiplied by 3, and 5 gets jealous and it becomes a 15. Now we put the whole numbers back on and we have 4 and 2 thirds becomes 4 and 16 twenty fourths, and 4 and 5 eighths becomes 4 and 15 twenty fourths. Now we can easily see which one's bigger. So in order from least to greatest, we know the 5 and a half is at the end. 4 and 5 eighths is smaller than 4 and 2 thirds. See? Because that's 16 twenty fourths instead of 15 twenty fourths. We also could have just multiplied the 3 times the 8. And we would have gotten to 24 and then found out what they needed to get to 24. See? And then made the numerator do the same thing. Sometimes the fraction sizes are really obvious. We have 6 and 9 tenths and 6 and 1 third. We know 9 tenths is bigger. It's almost one whole. It's almost 10 tenths. The other way to do it is to say, well, 5 tenths is half, and we know 9 is bigger than half, and we know that 1 third is not more than half. So it's not bigger. See? They have the same whole number, and this one's not as big as a half, and this one's bigger than a half. That one's got to be bigger. So we can use the halfway mark. That's a benchmark to help us. If we wanted to compare 7 tenths and 3 fourths, we might have to change this to a fraction or change this to a decimal. Either way. If we change this one to a decimal, we multiply the denominator into the numerator, and we have to add a decimal point and zeros to help us do it. 4 times 7 is 28. We take that away from the 30 and we get 2. Tack on another 0, and it goes into 20 five times. We know it's 0.75 and that it's bigger. If we change this to a fraction, we know it's 7 tenths. We need to get the denominators the same, so we get them to meet at 20's house. 4 needs to be multiplied by 5 to become 20. 3 is jealous and wants to be multiplied by 5 and becomes a 15. 10 just multiplies by 2. So 7 gets multiplied by 2. And we can see 15 twentieths is bigger than 14 twentieths. If we use a number line, the only thing we have to be careful of is to make sure that the increments are small enough that we get all the increments in there to be able to compare them. Okay? In this one, we have to have a little 0.15 right here because there's a 0.5. See? We can't just do tenths. We have to do hundredths in between. So we can change this into a decimal like we did before and it becomes out comes out to 0.75 like it was up there. And we can see that 0.75 is just a little bit bigger than 0.7. Because there's really an invisible zero here, isn't there? It's like 70 compared to 75. So we might have to convert the fractions to decimals or decimals to fractions to see which one's greater. Now, this is what you have to be careful about. Sometimes the instructions say order from greatest to least, and you won't see that, and you'll do least to greatest, and it'll all get marked wrong because you didn't pay attention. It tricked you. Now, I'm sure you can find this on the Internet. It's pretty funny. It shows two people, and they're both given a piece of paper, and it'll say, you know, do what's on this paper, and you can win $100, or you'll win, you know, you'll be the winner. And the two people will get the piece of paper, and one will just start reading all the things they have to do, and they'll start doing, they'll start squawking like a chicken, spinning ten times, doing a hula dance, crossing their eyes, jumping around like a monkey, they'll do the sit-ups, they'll mess up their hair, they'll say the ABCs backwards, snort like a pig, and then they read the last one. 
The other person will read the instructions, and it says read the entire paper before you begin, and at the very bottom it says do none of the above, sign your name to the paper and you're done. And here the other person didn't read the instructions, and they're jumping around like a monkey and stuff. So always read the instructions. I bet you could find that on the internet if you looked for it. It's pretty funny. It makes fun of people who don't read instructions. So, that is comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. You could use the halfway benchmark. You can convert them to a fraction or a decimal to help compare them. You can look at the denominators and just compare the numerators. And you can look at the whole numbers and see which one is going to be first or last. But pay attention if it says least to greatest or greatest to least, because that's the one that's going to get you the most. That's the one that's going to trick you, okay? So that's comparing. I'll see you next video. I'm proud of you. Keep going. You're doing great. Bye.